Welcome to everybody that's watching online and uh, everybody, of course, in the room. My name's Pete. I'm one of the pastors here. And this morning we have the wonderful privilege of celebrating baptisms happening live for the first time in a couple of years. We did what we needed to do. Yeah, I know. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. I feel like my job this morning is to get out of the way so we can get to those. We did what we needed to do during the pandemic. God was working in that season. We had lots of baptisms through, an on, through the online world, but this morning we get to actually see people enter into these waters. And so I thought I would offer just a few thoughts before we get to that about what is it that you're going to see? What is it that you're going to see? Well, in the, in the most basic way, you're going to see people come up here. They're going to get into the tank. They're going to go under the water. They're going to come back up out of the water. And if you heard nothing else, if, you, if that was all you saw, you'd be like, I saw, went to this building today. I saw people, they had, a, they had a strange sort of bath. But of course, much more than that is going on. What, one of the things that's going to be happening, one of the ways you can think about baptism is that you're going to watch a dramatic reenactment today. You're going to see people come up here and they're declaring something to you. They're, they're going to declare something that has happened in their lives. And what they're declaring is that they are, have placed their trust in Jesus and they have placed themselves in Jesus and they want to identify with his death and his resurrection Jesus died and then three days later was resurrected. They're coming up here to say, I want to identify with that. I want to declare to all of you that I'm placing my trust in what those actions meant. Paul, when he writes a letter to the Romans, he says it this way. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? It's kind of strange language if you haven't heard that before. Baptized into his death. That doesn't sound like something that I want to sign up for necessarily. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. The people that are coming up here this morning are declaring, I am in Christ and I am identifying with Christ's burial and his resurrection. So one of the things that they're saying, which is, which is quite odd in our culture, is that they're declaring there's actually something wrong with me. That when I look inward, I don't see everything's fine. Everything's fine. I'm a great person, crushing it in life in all areas. In fact, when I look inside, I find, I find actually that there's, a, there's darkness inside of me that there's selfishness inside of me, that there is greed inside of me, that there's hate and unforgiveness inside of me, that there's shame that I carry around for the way that I have lived my life. That's actually what I see when I, when I look inside. And, I, and I, there's a helplessness that I have to correct it or to pay for any of it. And so what you're going to see when people come up here this morning is that they are saying, I, I, I identify all of those things and I, and I want them to die. I want to put them off. I want them to no longer be a part of me. And Paul says, there's a way that you can do this. You can identify with the burial of Jesus. And in identifying with that, you are trusting that Jesus in his death paid for all of your sins. And by saying, I want to identify with that, you're saying, I trust that his payment was enough. And then, because I have identified with him in his death, I also get to identify with him in his resurrection. And Paul says those who identify with him in his death also get to identify with him in being resurrected to new life. It's an amazing thing that people are going to be saying this morning. Today, we're, many of us are going to watch the Super Bowl. More of us will watch the halftime show. And the most of us will watch the commercials afterwards all of the commercials, I wager that none of the commercials will make the pitch, our product is so good, you should die for it. Tostitos, so delicious. The new scoop ones, worth giving your life for. And yet Paul is kind of making this pitch like this, this thing that Jesus is offering you, it's worth giving up your whole life for because in exchange for your life, you'll get a new life. 
One way that you could look at what's gonna happen today is that there's two actions happening. There is a, there is a trust in Jesus as your savior, as your sin forgiver. That's the going under the water. I'm gonna trust that this death and identifying with Jesus' death, that covers my sins. I'm gonna trust Jesus as my savior, as my sin forgiver. And then there is the action of coming up out of the water, which is declaring or, or, or saying, I, I, I wanna identify with this new life that Jesus is gonna lead me into. That I'm making Jesus my leader, my Lord, my king. There's this kind of, I trust in his death and I trust in this new resurrected life that I'm gonna be invited to live this new identity that I'm gonna put on as a child of God, as someone who's walking in his presence, in his kingdom, starting here and now. That it starts here and now, and I have a hope for the future of what it's gonna look like when he comes to restore all things. It's this amazing drama that we're gonna see. There's another thing that, that is being declared here, and it's something that the church has declared since the beginning. Since the early church, there's been, a, there's been a statement, and we don't tend to say it as much anymore, but the early church was very fond of saying these words, I renounce the devil. I renounce the devil. And it was very, very common to, at, at, in baptism, say something along the lines of, I renounce the devil and his works and his pomp, which is a great pomp, what a great word, the devil and all his, his pomp. This is the devil with his pomp. It was very common in baptism to renounce the devil and his works and his pomp. St. Cyril of Jerusalem, he put it this way, and I really like the way that, that he phrased it. This would be something that would be read at baptisms. I renounce thee, plotter as thou art, who under the guise of friendship didst work all disobedience and bring about the apostasy of our first parents. Now, if you're a fan of the King James, well, then you're a fan of the way this is written. Didst and thou shalt and all of that. But I love the part that I've got in yellow here, under the guise of friendship. This idea that that you're going to renounce the devil who comes to you under the guise of friendship. I like to think of it this way, that it's almost like if we're standing here and God's inviting us, come and die. Come and die with me so you can be raised to new life. Admit that there's something wrong with you, that you're, that you're already on the trajectory of death. Admit it, come and die. And the devil comes to you and he puts his arm around you and he says, don't go that way. That's the way of death. Come with me. I'll lead you in the way of life, which of course is a lie. But it's the voice that's always speaking to us. You don't really need God. God's not what is best for you. He doesn't want what's best for you. Trust me, I'm your friend. It's like there's this voice that is always trying to lead us away from the waters of baptism and the symbolism of what baptism means. And one of the things that people that are getting into this tank this morning are saying, are saying, I have renounced that voice and I gladly pick up my cross and follow Jesus. I gladly identify with his burial that pays for my sins so I can be resurrected to a new life. And I believe that that's the only way to truly come alive. The only way to truly come alive is to trust in his sacrifice and to be filled with his spirit. That's what people are going to be declaring in these waters this morning. And so I wanted to speak specifically to three different groups of people because you're, I think you're in one of these three categories. You're either in the category of, I've been baptized. Many of you, maybe most of you in this room, many of you watching online, you'd say, I've been baptized. I know these verses. I know what you're talking about, Peter. I've heard all of this before. Well, to you, I wanna give you two ideas that I find really powerful whenever I'm thinking about baptism, whenever I'm in a baptism service. The first comes from the great reformer, Martin Luther. Martin Luther was known to have been often thinking, ruminating, being plagued with the idea of his sin and judgment and shame for his sin. And he was was thinking about this and he's known to have always said these words as a way to like refute that. When, When judgment and shame and guilt for his sins would be like pressing on him, he's known to have proclaimed, I was baptized. It's almost like saying, but, but, but I was baptized. I know you're trying to make these claims that I should feel a certain way, but I was baptized. And all of that is dead in the water. 
It doesn't hold me anymore. Some of you who have been baptized, maybe this morning you need to, you need to just hear those words and, and say that to yourself. Whatever the devil's been trying to get you to carry around, you need to say to him, uh -huh, I was baptized. That old me's been put off. I have a new identity. I was baptized. You just need to claim those words. And some of you need, need to hear these words, that maybe you need to be grabbed by your baptism. I heard someone say that phrase before. I can't remember if it's like an old church father or I heard it in a sermon, but I heard it somewhere and it stuck with me. Sometimes we need to be grabbed by our baptism, which is to say you once got into these waters. There was a moment in your life where you proclaimed to the community, I'm a follower of Jesus, I'm giving my life to him. And yet you're not living that way. In fact, your life is actually proclaiming something much different. And so this morning, some of you, I want you to feel a little bit of a twinge as though someone's grabbing you by your baptism to say, that's not who you are anymore. Live up to who you said you were going to be at your baptism. Some of you maybe know somebody and with filled with love and because you have a great relationship with them, you need to grab them by their baptism and say, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing with your life? This is not who you proclaim to be, and you need to grab them by their baptism and say, you were baptized, this is not who you proclaim to be. Some of you are in that camp, I was baptized, and I wanna just give you those two phrases, I was baptized, or maybe you need to be grabbed by your baptism. Some of you would say, I'm a follower of Jesus. I gave my life to him, but I'm, I'm not baptized. And to you, a couple things. One, baptism doesn't save you, faith saves you. It is your trust in Jesus that saves you, which is maybe why you haven't got baptized. Because you heard that and you said, oh, well, great. I'm already, you know, I'm reconciled to God. Why do we need to do the ritual, the fancy water thing? A couple things then, if that's what you're saying. Well, one, you're saying you're a follower of Jesus, and yet you're not following one of the things that he told us to do. You get the, there's a little contradiction there? I am a follower of Jesus. Good. One of the first things he said to do after you become a follower, get baptized. Well, no, I'm not doing that. Well, then you got a problem because you're not, you're saying you're following, but you're not following. But maybe the, the more, the more appealing way to think about it is that does Jesus ever command us to do something that isn't good for us? No. He wants what's best for us. He knows what's best for us. And so if he commands us to be baptized then perhaps you could look at these waters as a gift. That mysteriously in this symbolic act, there is a gift for you. And perhaps the gift will be that you will get to take something that was a moment of prayer between you and God. Perhaps it was a very personal moment where you gave your life to him. And perhaps the gift is that he will give you something very tangible to look back on. We're like, I don't know, I said the prayer. Did I say a prayer right? Did I say the right words? By the way, there is no like magical prayer. We're not like superstitious about a magical prayer. But you may wonder like, was that moment tangible enough? And maybe God gives us this, this tangible expression as a gift so that you could look back and go, I don't know exactly when I gave my life to him, but I know exactly when I declared it to the community. Maybe there's a gift waiting for you here in these waters. And so for those of you who are followers and are not yet baptized, I feel confident enough to say, don't just think about it, do it. Jesus commands us as his followers to get baptized. And then the last category, maybe you're here and you're saying, I'm not even a follower. Maybe you're watching, you're saying, I'm not even a follower. I'm a friend of someone who's getting baptized today. I wanna make sure that you know that the invitation is always open to you. The invitation to place your trust in Jesus is always open. It's as simple as saying, Jesus, I trust that your sacrifice on the cross is enough to pay for all of my sins. And I wanna make you the Lord of my life. I wanna give you my whole life and put my trust in you. It's as simple as saying that. And if you have lots of more questions around what does that mean? How do I do that? What, what, is that? what else does that entail? We would love to walk with you in that process. We'd love to, whether you're online and you wanna type something in the chat, whether you wanna find me in the lobby afterwards, whether you wanna send an email to somebody at the church, we would love to walk you through that process so that maybe one day you too will enter into these waters of baptism. Mm -hmm.